Hi everyone, with me again, Adi Kurniawan Yusuf. And in this video, we're gonna talk about one of important macroeconomic indicator that is used by all countries to measure their economic growth. What is that? It is GDP. What is GDP? GDP is Gross Domestic Product. It is market value of final goods and services produced in a country during a given period. One more time, GDP is market value of final goods and services produced in a country during a given period. So, based on this definition, there are four characteristics of GDP. First, it is market value. Second, final goods and services. Third, produced in a country. And fourth, during a given period. Let's take a look one by one. First is market value. Market value is simply the price of goods and services in the market. For example, country A produces four apples during a year. The price of one apple is 30,000 rupiah. So the GDP of country A is simply four times 30,000 rupiah. It is 120,000 rupiah. Is it easy, right? The question is, why do we need market value? Why don't we try to say that the GDP of country A is for apples? The answer is that a country will never produce only one product, right? They will produce a lot of types of goods and also services. For example, a country produces four apples, five bananas, and three pairs of shoes. Each apple price is 30,000 rupiah, each banana price is 40,000 rupiah, and each pair of shoes price is 100,000 rupiah. So, what is the GDP of country A? Just simply multiply the unit and also its market value, then sum it all. So, for the apples, it means 4 times 30,000 rupiah, it is 120,000 rupiah. For banana, 5 units time 40,000 rupiah it is 200,000 rupiah well for pair of shoes it is 3 units times 100,000 rupiah it is 300,000 rupiah so the total will be 620,000 rupiah that is the GDP of country A it is easy right now I have a question for you does a housewife have market value or not for example your mother is a housewife she sweeps the floor every day, she mops the floor every day, she washes the clothes every day, she cooks every day. She does everything and what she does have economic value. But what is housewife market value? We could not determine it. Why? Because housewife is not sold and bought in the market. It is different when you hire housekeeping or you hire childcare service. It is bought and sold in the market, so it has market value. So calculating GDP using market value has its drawback. Not all economic valuable goods and services bought and sold in the market. If it is bought and sold in the market, then we can count it in GDP. But when it is not sold and bought in the market, so it is not counted as GDP. Second is final goods and services. What is the difference between final goods and also intermediate goods? Final goods and services are goods and services consumed by ultimate user because they are the end products of the production process and they are counted as GDP. While intermediate goods and services are work in process, they are still used to produce final goods and services and they are not counted in GDP. For example, the grain has market value 50,000 rupiah and then the grain is grounded into flour. The flour has market value 120,000 rupiah. Finally, that flour is used to make a bread that has market value 200,000 rupiah. My question is that, what is the contribution to GDP? The contribution to GDP is 200,000 rupiah. Why? Because a bread is the final goods, while the grain and the flour are not the final goods. Do you get the idea? Now the reality is that a good could be intermediate goods or final goods. This is the example. 
Farmer Brown produce 1 million rupiah of milk. Then he sell 400,000 rupiah to the other people while he used the rest to feed his pigs. His pigs could be sold to his neighbor in the amount of 1 million and 200,000 rupiah. My question is that, what is total contribution to GDP? If you see here that from 1 million rupiah, 400,000 is sold directly to the other people. So it is final goods and services. So it is counted as GDP. While the rest 600,000 rupiah coming from 1 million rupiah minus 400,000 rupiah is used to feed his pigs. And then his pig will be sold to the neighbor 1 million and 200,000 rupiah. So here, 600,000 to fit his pig is not final goods, it is intermediate goods. While the price of the pig that is sold to the neighbor, it is the final goods. So 1 million and 200,000 rupiah is counted as GDP. Then the total contribution of GDP is 400,000 rupiah plus 1 million and 200,000, it equals to 1 million and 600,000 rupiah. As I explained before that intermediate goods could not be calculated as GDP, but this concept is not easy to apply. Why? Because the production process stretch over several periods. Let's see from previous example, the grain, the floor, and also the bread. We have known from the previous example that the GDP is 200,000. Now, how if the grain and also the flour is produced in the end of 2018 while the bread is produced in the beginning of 2019. 200,000 GDP should be given to 2018 or 2019 or both or we need to divide it. To answer that question, we learn about value added concept. As we know, the market value of the grain is 50,000 rupiah, flour 120,000 rupiah, and the bread 200,000 rupiah. Now, if the grain and also flour is produced in the end of 2018, while well, the bread is produced in 2019, how value added concept determines the GDP? In 2018, actually, they have nothing in the beginning, and then they produce grain and also flour. Because of that, floor here become the finished good in 2018. So the GDP in 2018 is 120,000. How if this floor is used to make bread in 2019? So in 2019 GDP, we don't directly put 200,000, but we only put the value added from 2018. In 2018, it worth 120,000. In 2019, it produced a bread that is 200,000. It means the value added is 200,000 minus 120,000. So in 2019, the GDP of this product is only 80,000, coming from 200,000 minus 120. So if we sum it up, in 2018, 120,000, 2019, 80,000, the total is 200,000 rupiah. Third, produce in a country. For example, Brian is US citizen, but he comes to Indonesia and produce a car in Indonesia. So that car is counted as GDP of Indonesia based on where the product is produced. The other example, I am Indonesia citizen, but I produce a car in US. So it will be counted as GDP of US, not Indonesia, because I produce it in US. Do you get the idea? For during a given period. So GDP only measure the production during a given period. For example, the sale of used product. So it has been produced, for example, three years ago, four years ago. It is not counted as GDP right now. But if you are real estate sales and then you get commission this year, it is counted as GDP. So those four things, first, market value, second, finished goods or services, third, produced in a country, and fourth, during a given period, are principles to calculate GDP using market value approach. 
Now I want to give you the other insight how to calculate GDP using expenditure approach. GDP using expenditure method is calculated like this. GDP equals to C plus I plus G plus NX. What is C? C is consumption, I is investment, G is government spending, and NX is net export. First is consumption. Consumption is spending by household, which is us. So if we purchase food, we purchase clothes, we purchase drink, it is counted as GDP in consumption part. It consists of consumer durable goods such as car, furniture, and then consumer non-durable goods. It is short-term life goods such as food and also clothes. And then services such as haircut service, educational service, consultant service, those all are included in GDP in consumption part. Second is investment. It is spending by the firm. For example, the firm purchase machine, purchase building. It is calculated as GDP in investment part. Third is government spending. It is all spending made by the government. For example, government has construction project and they need to pay for it. It is government spending. But for government spending, it does not include transfer payment and interest paid on government bond. And the last is net export. It's simply export minus import. So based on the formula, GDP is equal to consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net export. If the government want to increase the GDP, they need to increase the consumption, increase the investment, increase the government spending and also increase the net export. As the summary of this video, we can know and we can calculate GDP using two basic approach. First is market value approach. GDP is market value of final goods and services produced in a country during a given period. And second, expenditure method. GDP equals to consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net export. Right now, GDP is best single measure of economic well-being of the society. Higher GDP per person means higher standard of living. Now, my question for you. Is GDP a perfect measure of happiness and quality of life? Let's try to find it out by yourself.